and I walked her to the door that leads to the arrow cave, and she was like, I thought you told me that this was like a hazard area, flooded. And I just looked at her and I go, I lied. <laughs> I loved that line. I loved it, I loved it. So that was a great scene. We'll let it do very well with that scene. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. I'm going to word this a little funny for spoiler reasons. Uh, in the last episode, there was a big, big event that happened. Um, and theoretically, it should affect not just Arrow, but Flash and Legends and the other shows too. Is that going to be addressed? Um, or not? That's an interesting question. So, I mean, what, what, what you're talking about is a, is a nuclear bomb. Right? Spoiler. <laughs> You're in the wrong room. And, uh, you know, obviously everybody is very uh, busy right now with their season finales and what is going on in those places. But you wouldn't think that the after effects of tens of thousands of deaths would be addressed in the universe going forward in season five. I would imagine that it would be in season two and season three, respectively. Thanks. Thanks, man. Hi, Stephen. Hey. Um, question about the Anu. It's um, obviously a magical place, but it has had a lot of um, people visit what seems to be a remote island. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The one that I didn't see, apparently? Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Spoiler. And of the ones that you did see, what do you think was the weirdest? Of all of the things that Oliver saw on the Anu, what was the weirdest? I mean, from a weird perspective, it was probably. Uh, oh gosh, I'm thinking back to everything that happened. It's probably what happened this season. You know, the mysticism and all those, all those things, and you know, seeing a guy like Constantine on the AMU and troubling. <laughs> Thanks, man. Fill the house with his bare hands and huge boulders. And... Oh, that's a good choice. <laughs> um, my question is obviously, Oliver gets stranded on the AMU for five years. If you were to end up stranded anywhere, where would you hope to be stranded? And then, uh, for four years of Arrow, you've always used the bow and arrow. Was it difficult to come into the set and into turtles and using a completely different type of weather? I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so a hockey stick was like, hey, you're, you're, you're going to use a pro k bat. Uh-oh. But uh, no, it was, it was really fun. And doing turtles actually reminded me of the pilot of Arrow where, you know, I was up in Vancouver three, four weeks prior to the pilot, and uh, Katie Lotz is uh, staff uh, in the early part of the second season. So I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely one of my favorite Yeah, and it was a great scene. I, you know, I like scenes that are earned. Do you know what I mean? Paul Blackthorne and I, and Quentin Lance and Oliver Queen had been going back and forth, and, and he, had, he had always felt somewhat superior, and he'd always sort of spoken down to me. And even when we were in cahoots with one another, it was like hands are zip tied behind my back, and I I come out of the zip ties without so much as like going like that. So the conclusion that we came to is three props guys got together and actually bound me. <laughs> and there was nothing to do. I care so much about Susanna Thompson and Moira as a character and the integrity of the show and the importance of the scene that when we shot it, when we shot my coverage. I tried to get out of those things. What is another word? And I came away from that scene exhausted, emotionally spent, bruised. I had little, I, it, it looked like I was trying to escape from shackles. So that was the most intense scene in the history of the show, for sure. Thank you very much, Hester. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Um, I wanted to say that season three and four were lacking in your use of your training bars. And is that something you can bring back in season five? Preferably shirtless. My wife is here. That's fine, we just want to watch. Uh, so maybe the theme for season five can be everything that's old is new again. What do you say? Some old school stupid train sequences. Shirtless for no reason. Yeah. I'll kill a bunch of guys. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some grease paint. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to keep going until people are like, no. Um, the Samuel Line will always be a part of the show. And 
I guarantee you that I will do it next year. I can promise you. But if not, I have been, and uh, my wife can attest to this again, I, I have been on the go in some way, shape, or form trying to stay in shape and going to the gym since July of 2014 because I went from season three of Arrow's directly to Turtles directly to season four of Arrow. I have not so much as gotten my resting heart rate above 75 in like three weeks and it feels fantastic. <laughs> I'll go back to it, but for now, I'm, I'm really enjoying some time off. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Um, you've been very vocal in pushing um, for other elements of the DC universe to come into the show, be it um, Flash or be it Constantine or Vixen or anything like that, and kind of expanding the, the perimeter of the show. Um, I just wondered, like, when the show started in the first season, there was no superpowers, no magic or anything like that. Um, when did it become obvious that you could push the limits of the show and bring in these kind of elements? And did, did you push for that? Um, or was it a writer's decision? There's a bunch of things at play here. Television is a business. Um, Warner Brothers owns Arrow. Warner Brothers sells Arrow to Sky One, or Sky TV, Sky One. Which one? Sky One. Exactly. <laughs> and it is, you know, it's, it's their responsibility to package it in a good way. So Arrow is packaged, and we spend the entire year going. This is the superhero show with no superhero, with no superpowers, right? Then, out of nowhere, and if anyone says they knew it was coming, they're lying, the pilot comes out and it pops. And it gets a big rating for the CW. And all of a sudden, it is the, it's, it's one of the breakout shows of the fall. And I think from the 2012 slate, it may in fact be the only one left. And it's been almost uh, incredibly supernaturally, no pun intended, um, consistent in terms of ratings and in terms of viewers. And in some instances, in some places, it's actually gone up a little bit. So it's the show with no superpowers. But then DC, WB, go to Greg Berlanti and say, would you like The Flash? And they go, of course we would. And bam, Arrow has superpowers. Speaking of superpowers, speaking of original <laughs> Bring you a special treat. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. You also look so fresh. <laughs> <laughs> this How is Emily. This is Emily. I'm, I'm Emily. Say hi, Emily. Hi. This is David Paul Ramsey. <laughs> How is this going? Uh, I'm answering questions, trying not to swear, drinking a Guinness, and uh, I looked down to see if your Guinness was still there because I thought it was going to jump on. No, I, I moved just it. Disappeared. I moved it. Well, how many of you guys uh, kind of anticipated this? Liars. How many of you were like, yes, yeah, Steve, or whatever, one of the only. I didn't know this was going to happen. I was literally just informed. Yeah, she was wrangled. <laughs> I was outside, I was like, what? <laughs> By the way, David, I've been meaning to ask you about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, Stephen, talk. What is I was in the lounge earlier today, and they explained to me how explicit and extensive you were in your description of the season now. Yeah. Do you know that it has, do you know that it has not aired yet? Did I give away something? Yo, oh, yeah! I can't remember. <laughs> There are two episodes left. Oh! Don't talk in this. I gave an X? Yeah. Wait, hey. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that big. I've never played this game. I think he needs a good question, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a live idea in the and he hasn't done that before, like, ever. So we try to explain how it works. And we're like, you know, you're not supposed to tell us, but what you're doing about it, now you have to guess. So, like, he's going to have to tell me. But I can't feel like this. You need a bit. I was really bad at it. Um, but I'm better now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I have to talk. We appreciate the story, though. 
It's not really that. This is good. We have spent an incredible amount of time together over the past four years. Oh, yeah. Way too much time. Way too much time. It's nice being here with you this weekend, but I was I was still on break. <laughs> until until this weekend. Until this know, weekend. Until I this see weekend. You guys. Yeah. Let's take a couple of let's take a couple of questions. You're in luck. Uh, uh, I uh, really love the dynamic. Dynamic. Three of you. What are we? What uh, can you tell about how we get the dynamic? Easy. Probably Sam in a triangle along there in the middle of the bunker. Yeah. Two truths, one lie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We don't know we don't know a lot about season five. True story. Oh, a couple of things. But they're they're very general. I think one of them is very cool and one of them gets into that whole everything old is good. But I don't know what our dynamic is. And and in terms of it being the three of us. That will make sense when you see the power. See, David, that's how you answer a question. Yeah. 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 My bad. My bad. Yeah. You're such a charming audience. Yeah. Um, you already said that you found a scene for this game. Can I ask you? Particularly difficult and emotionally challenging. Has there been any scenes to prove you that you found a lot of people that you've been laughing or found it? Like, how long is this panel? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Sam, you're going to have to tell us about your favorite whiskey. But it wasn't just the three of us recording whiskey. It was Lila and you, you're going to drink whiskey. That took forever. Oh, yeah, that did take forever. With the, with the whiskey, we had to yeah. keep pouring, keep pouring, keep pouring, keep pouring, keep pouring, keep pouring. Keep pouring, keep pouring. <laughs> yeah, How much are you going to pour? Yeah, so I was pouring Lila the whiskey, and I. <laughs> I, I I just kept messing with her and I kept pouring her whiskey like, until it had surface tension at the top of the glass. And I was just I was destroying everybody. And every once in a while, it doesn't happen often. And I think because it doesn't happen often, because I can't take a joke that well when I'm on set sometimes, I will miss a line. And I can't get it. But you can oh, make a good yeah. joke. Yeah, you can make yeah. a solid joke at the final hour to prove it. Okay. Yeah. Barrel you know. is the worst at it. Because you see the wheels turning <laughs> and he's like I'm not going to go there. And it's just like you see it, you smell the smoke burning. And it's just like he can't catch it. He can't get it back. He can't get it back. If, if I if I am saying a line and I lose it, sometimes it's just a word that I can't say. But if I'm saying a line and I lose it, I just stop. Damn it! And I start again. Barrowman trucks through. He trucks through. He starts saying it's all wrong. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, again, and thank you for coming out today. It's brilliant to see you three together. And one of the biggest story arcs of this season has been the grave and um, who was going to be in it. Now, of course, there were worries they were going to be Big O or Fia. Obviously, we found out it was Laurel. How did it feel when you all found out that you were all, and you know, like, was it, I really want to talk about it? I just cried. I just cried. I just That, and I was fucking so happy when I was I mean, that, we love we love Katie. I mean, the see Katie go was devastating for all of us. Like that that scene, I've said it before. That scene where we were in the hospital and the uh, the death scene, those were genuine. Yeah, tears. That was all everyone, everyone. Was uh, nobody could stop crying. Yeah. yeah, so it was it was it was very emotional. Uh, it was emotional when we heard it, but it really, I think for me, it hit home um, that day. During this. I did too, because I was about to say I actually have to report to Katie. Those are final scene, and it was like her in bed. I, I didn't. I mean, obviously, it had to be. <clears throat> obviously, it had to be someone, and I knew that it was going to be a regular because otherwise, it was going to be a cop out. And uh, I heard right after Katie heard. Uh, actually, I was in uh, New Jersey as the storm was about to hit, and uh, it's a testament to the type of professional and the reason that we miss Katie 
is because she got that news that night. The next day she showed up in New Jersey, or Sunday because she got snowed in Manhattan, and she was a professional. She had a smile on her face. She smiled at pictures. She signed autographs. She she nailed it. And you know that's why that's why when she leaves, you know we're gonna miss her, and we are we're gonna miss her for sure. Downer. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Emily, I know you said you would like more female, strong female characters on the show, but Stephen, David, what do you think? Do you think we should have more female, strong empowered characters on the show? We're going to step back and let Emily answer this one. <laughs> she said it because I said it. Now she says it. Oh, you said it because you said Right. Absolutely. I'll tell you, one of my all time favorite characters was the Huntress. Mm -hmm. From Kicked Ass. She's in jail somewhere, and by in jail, I mean Jessica Gal keeps booking jobs, and we can't bring her back. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's a great line that Diggle has when he talks about how awesome Felicity is to Oliver, and he says, "Listen, I know how you feel about her because I've married a woman just like her. Oh, yeah. She's awesome." Yeah. And that was a great moment, a great line between, great moment between these two. And um, so, and, and the last episode, last one before the I forgot the name of when uh, Sarah was strapped on my back, and you know, <laughs> passed the baby. Yeah. Why was Diggle on a motorcycle, high chasing and a baby strapped on the back? She could pick it. Was it going to your job? Like, take it now. Uh, but Lila's one of those characters, you know, and, and uh, so the more the merrier. You know what we need? Emily was saying earlier, every year we have a big bad. We need a female big bad. Yeah. 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 I'll, uh, I'll put the bug in everyone's ears. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, don't tell us that. Talking about how Don't tell us your favorite turtle, you're a bit of a weirdo. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being a weirdo, so go on, weirdo. <laughs> uh, I had a question, but then you guys came on stage, well, so I'm going to change it. Um, what party tricks do you guys have, and can you show us? Okay, well, can we show you? Party tricks? Well, you think of yours, and David, again, kids are here. <laughs> I play a very, very mean uh, mouth trombone. Yeah, you do. Oh, okay. Yeah, you do. David calls it the drunk and drunk. Yeah, the yeah, drunk and drunk. drunk. Yeah, it, it, appears, it appears when, see, the cortisone hits. <laughs> right around 1 o'clock in the morning, 12.45 a.m. And just the sillies come because we've been, ex around nine, after lunch, around 9 or 10 o'clock, we just kind of like, we're tired, we're like, oh, we can see the light, we can see the light. And then it's like, oh, we got oh, another hour and a half scene left. So all of a sudden, it just the adrenaline hits. And the silly hit, and that's when the drunk and trouble comes. And Steven is just, you know, out of just nowhere, is like, um, and cut. The return. I don't know if this is your party trick, but it's a pretty cool party trick. David, if he was so inclined, could literally fall asleep on stage right now like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why do I have to fall asleep? Yes. You think that's a party trick? Um, no, that's surviving a five-year-old. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. You gotta sleep, man. I, I, I can't follow that. Even Colton falls asleep anywhere. Colton. Colton does, Colton really. Just isn't. Yeah, like, he, he's. I think I'm actually like the sleep in them immediately. Well, I think so. If I had liquid, I could do that. But if I had liquid, you could literally come, come through your right. <laughs> No. No, I was at the bar back in the movie. Never seen it. I know. <laughs> you don't even want it. Never seen it. Never caught it on camera. Didn't have it. Oh, okay. Thank you, Randy. Yes. Hi. Um, here on the Lip Sync Battle Show, um, <laughs> <laughs> what two songs would you choose? Oh, 
Who would I want to compete with? Oh, that's tough. That's tough. <clears throat> like, who, who amongst the actors? Oh, I know my songs. No, but I'm more interested in who I would compete with. Jared! Ah. Who? Me and you versus Jared Jensen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and with, with the condition being they can't sing a country song and they're both effed. <laughs> Yeah. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> what would you know what your song would be? Well, my song would probably be in five. Any uh, song for songs about Jane. Um, she was a stage <laughs> made you And um, I don't know who I would compete I'd probably compete against my best friend. Probably take Matt out there with me because she'd kick my ass. <laughs> that or um, Bare Naked Ladies in one week. It's super hard to do. It's so hard. I would have to, I would have to brush it. You guys never heard of Bare Naked Ladies? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's your song? What's your song? Uh, you know, well, listen, I, I like the Jerry Sing versus it, Jensen right? thing for you. Yes. Yeah, but they can't do what we do. <laughs> 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 they can't do Ebony and Ivory, sweetheart. <laughs> 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 Oh, I tried to sing Why Don't We Do It On The Road by The Beatles. Yeah. There was no microphone. There was no one knew it. it. didn't stop me. <laughs> there was no microphone. There was no there, song. There's one, sorry, there's, no, there was a, that's right. There was a microphone, <laughs> but no song. Didn't stop me. Should have. with the ending of season four. I think that promises are honored, that characters are honored, that everyone is on a new and interesting journey. Um, it certainly it doesn't feel like a, it doesn't feel like a series finale. It certainly feels like a season finale. Uh, I felt like last year felt like a series finale. And um, most importantly, there's a little pop of entry right at the end that I think is gonna really jazz people up for some new interesting stuff in season five. And it's gonna continue on one of my favorite parts of season four. Yes. Hi. I'm glad you had a good time. I've had a really um, good time too. I wanted to, well, with one breath, and it's kind of how I did the next day, but you can still answer it. Um, how do you think if you got to play another character on Outlaw, and you weren't Ollie, how do you think uh, you would have done on the show? Oh, boy. And which character would you, would you like to be if you weren't Ollie? Well, if I had played Tommy, I'd probably be doing movies right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, boy, that's a, that's a tough question. I think, honestly, if I could pick one other character to play on the show, just based on how mental and awesome and fantastic this character was, I picked Slade Wilson. Yeah, that was a pretty interesting arc. That was a pretty interesting arc, and Manny did a wonderful job. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's late. Thank you very much. All right. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, what can we expect for Olympia meetings with the end of season four and season five? Nothing. I think that Emily, Oliver, and Felicity's relationship is um, it's in a very mature place. I think that's where we leave it. And I think there's a little bit of certainty towards the end of the season as to what the future is going to hold for them. Can't say anything. <laughs> Can't say anything. But um, they just for this I don't know if we have any real firm together. resolution. We certainly don't have the type of firm resolution that we had in season three, where they were literally driving off into the sunset. We certainly don't have that this year. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. Here we go. Hi. Again. You asked the first question. I'm not sorry. Perfect. <laughs> I want to say thank you for making Arrow really awesome because if you wasn't the character and the person you are, I don't think it'd be the same. Well, that's not a question, but I so appreciate it. Yeah. Now, you know, listen, whether you're dealing with a big, sometimes big properties are harder than other properties. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's the, sometimes it's characters that, that maybe don't have the same type of mainstream love within the universe that you can really curate them and you can really drive them towards a specific vision. And, um, I've loved and continue to love playing Oliver Queen. And, you know, I'm hoping that I get to spend a bit more time with him. Cool. Thank you. Hey, Birmingham, thank you so much. Uh,